right now, I want to introduce to some and present to others an amazing man of God. He's coming all the way from Atlanta, Georgia in the USA, and his name is Hassani Pettiford of the Couples Academy. You're going to hear some great testimonies and great information tonight. So put your hands together for him as our first guest as he takes the stage. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, finally, we get you. We get you to <laughs> ourselves. We get you on, on the show. Yes, sir. And um, I'm looking forward to talking to you about, in particular, mm -hmm. uh, of course, the work you're doing with couples and also with singles. Yes. Uh, Hassani, we know you're a, re a professional relationship coach along with your wife, trained, uh, published uh, 12 books taking America by storm, traveling around the world to Africa, the Middle East. Uh, this mm -hmm. year was your first trip to London. Yes. And so London gets to yeah. enjoy your ministry, which is really directed at making sure healthy relationships are built. Um, let's begin talking about that. I want to I hear from you in, in terms of your experience, in terms of what, first of all, drove you to get involved in really helping relationships. Well, you know, my parents have been married for 45 years. Wow. wow. All my aunts and uncles are still married today. My right. grandparents were married up until they both passed. So I don't understand what divorce is because I never experienced it. I, I don't come from that particular background. So I was always fascinated about what made certain relationships succeed and others, you know, not work out. So that kind of sent me on a quest and a journey to begin to delve into this particular area. Right. And so for the last 17 years, I've, I've been working with singles and then transitioning into working with couples after we got a few years under our belt. Yeah. And we experienced major conflict in our marriage. Yeah. Year two, we were on the verge of divorce. And so at that moment, we were faced with two options. Either I had to divorce her because it wasn't working out, or rather, I made the decision to divorce me from myself. Wow. I divorced myself from my poor communication Say that habits. Again. Divorce you from yourself. I had to divorce me from myself. Wow. Because oftentimes we're married to certain beliefs and concepts that don't work in favor of our union. So when I decided to change me, because as long as I was trying to change or fix the marriage, I was really trying to fix her. <laughs> and then I realized that I was the lowest common denominator in my life and in my relationship. And when I began to make changes within me, everything began to change within the realm of our relationship. Wow, wow, wow. That, well, that takes a, a whole lot of humility, a whole lot of self-denial. Your ministry is not just impacting Christians, but your professional relationship coach to celebrities, to yep. sports stars, and to, to uh, what they might call everyday people as well. Tell us, tell us about some of the key areas that you found seem to challenge marriages today. You know, I would say problems show up in many, many different areas, yes. but I often like to say you really don't have a sex problem or you don't have a financial problem, a parenting problem, an in-law problem. What you have is an inability to effectively communicate. Right. And because we don't know how to do that, problem areas show up all throughout our marriage. And so what we do is we try to give people foundation right. and building blocks of what it takes to have a secure, sustainable relationship so that they can overcome any obstacle that they may face. All right, right there, right there. I'm, I'm going to have to ask you to give us at least three of the building blocks. You mentioned building blocks okay. for a successful marriage. I know you've got this amazing book, <laughs> The Audacity of Marriage, which... Uh, I, I just cover some phenomenal topics. You, you leave no stone unturned in there. Uh, but tell us some of the building blocks, just in terms of your experience and how you've seen success happen in marriages. Well, number one, communication. So there's a chapter in the book entitled, Help, My Mouth is Killing My Marriage. And it became... My near, mouth my, is killing yeah. my... Wow, okay. It became dear <laughs> and dear to me because I was a verbal assassin. But I did it ignorantly, and I didn't realize I was shutting my wife's spirit down yeah. through my words. And I remember in the midst of an argument, Danielle began to cry. We were in the bedroom, and she looked at me, and she said, you know what? You declitorize me. Lord Jesus. Now, oftentimes, we hear about how women emasculate a man yeah. through her words. Yes. Well, she created a word that's not even in the dictionary. <laughs> I did, and so what she was she saying She created that, a word. I'm not even sure if we can air. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, folks. <laughs> but what she was saying is that I stripped her of her womanhood. Right. I robbed her of her femininity. With your with assassination the, with, of exactly. your words. Exactly. And when I began to realize that, I had to learn that, you know what? Communication really has three components. 
your words, what you say, your tonality, how you say what you say, and then your facial expressions and body language. And oftentimes, these three components are delivering very different messages that conflict with one another. So sometimes, you know, they can't hear what we're saying because of how in which we're saying it. And so if we really learn how to master that particular area, things will begin to work out. Another component, which I think is very important, many of our marriages, we've been taught that compromise is the key to a successful relationship. And though I understand that concept, we believe that negotiation is a better process. Compromise implies that there's a winner and a loser. And typically in a relationship, there's always someone who's winning and the other person who's always sacrificing and losing. And so over the course of time, that creates a major problem because someone will eventually go rogue because they can't take it anymore. And so it leads to all types of crisis. So we believe in marital negotiation. Now, a negotiation is a win-win scenario where you consider the, the, the interest in the ideas of both parties and come up with something that's mutually beneficial. And once you understand that conflict, you can really overcome any conflict that you have within your relationship. Wow. Give us one more building block. <laughs> Trust. I, I'm, I'm trying to pull as much as I can out of you here for the audience. Go ahead. I think that the number one struggle that people deal with in relationships yeah. is the lack of trust. Right. Now, whether that trust uh, came as a result of, of uh, I don't know, expectations that were not fulfilled, major disappointments, or whether there's been a violation in a relationship like infidelity. You know, I'm an infidelity recovery specialist, and 97% of our clients have been impacted by that. Wow. And though some do a good job of forgiving, the, forgive, the, the trust piece is a completely different dynamic that you have to learn to incorporate into your relationship. And it's a two-way street. So there are things that both partners must do in order to regain and rebuild the trust in the relationship. And once you have that, those building blocks will allow you to have a sustainable relationship. Wow. One of the chapters in your book is talking about how to have a successful marriage. Yes, sir. Lord Jesus. So, uh, <laughs> so, so, so how have you found men engaging with your book vis-a-vis -vis women? Have, obviously, there tends to be an yeah. assumption that women are usually more open to advice, to counsel. Mm -hmm. How have you engaged the men in the marriages? Because you've de dealt with sports stars, um, uh, uh, celebrities, people who mm -hmm. tend to oftentimes have, a, especially when it comes to the men, quite a big ego. Yes. And so how have you managed to really engage them? Well, generally speaking, men are very, very apprehensive about counseling because they feel like they're going to be tag team by their wealth and the wife and the counselor. So, so the wife and the apprehensive. counselor against yes, the man. Sure, exactly. Sure. But I like to tell people, listen, I'm not fighting for your first name. I'm fighting for your last name. For your last name represents your marriage and your future and your legacy. Your first name represents your individuality. And we have to learn how to put self down and do what's necessary to restore the unit. But men are able to open up in ways that they never could. You know, the uh, minister was talking earlier about a safe place, a safe environment on one of the other shows. And I think it's important that we understand that a area of safety must be created in a counseling session to allow men to open up and, and, and really express their grievances. And the book is written for a, a woman to understand and for a man to understand. It's spoken in a language that they both can resonate with. And so we've seen tremendous results, tremendous results as a result of this particular book. What about um, some of the, the darker sides of uh, people's experiences such as abuse? Yes. And uh, uh, the engagement with people who've suffered not just physical but also verbal. You talked about my mouth is killing my marriage. How have you gone about reorganizing people's mindsets in terms of how to really forgive, yes. especially when it comes to things where they've really experienced uh, trauma, psychological trauma, emotional trauma, and unfortunately often physical? First of all, I think it's important that individuals understand that the counseling process is not a quick fix. Right. You can't have a session or two, possibly three, and think that you can work out what you've spent 20 years of your marriage struggling with. Yeah. It's a process. It's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. But there are three areas that we kind of focus on that really are impactful. Number one is the marital recovery. So we right. talked about putting those building blocks in place. Number two is the individual recovery process of the individual. Because the hurt partner, as an example, 
has a completely different journey and experience than, say, the unfaithful partner or the abuser. And what one needs is different from what the other needs. So when we're able to deal with both the individual and the marriage, we're then able to make a quantum leap forward in their success. And for those who have been impacted by infidelity, we delve into the, the depths of that affair to make sure that it never happens again. So a lot of times when we're doing our private marriage intensives, yeah. breakthrough is really the result of what happens, and we're able to heal them in such a way that there's no residue from the past that they've experienced, and they come out a brand new couple. Uh, a ministry like yours is, for me, vital. As I look at the body of Christ, as I look at just the world, society generally, people struggling to build healthy relationships, especially when they've had no point of reference mm. as to what a healthy relationship yes. looks like. In terms, of, uh, in terms of your own journey, yourself and Danielle, reflecting on what you guys have been through and the credibility that that gives you guys to be able to minister to others, how have you found churches receiving you? Because I, I struggle as I look around to see many ministries like yours. Very apprehensive. You would think that we would receive an overwhelming uh, response and a welcome for us to come into those ministries. Now, I will say, there are many churches who have embraced us, much like yours and many others around the world, but I think that it's still a sticky issue for many ministries, and they don't know how quite to handle that. But for those that do embrace the concept, they've been able to receive a tremendous breakthrough. And what we've done as an organization, we've partnered with churches, right. and we've become almost like in-house counselors. So whenever there are issues that the system of the church is not able to Science. address, they, exactly, they send them over to us. And what's awesome about it is we've had countries all over the world that have called upon us. So we've flown out to... Um, Europe, we've flown out to the Middle East, we've flown out to, to the Caribbean and worked personally one-on-one -on -one with both the couples as well as the ministries. That's wonderful. Well, we've talked about married couples, Couples Academy. Yes. Uh, of course, yourself and Danielle are relationship coaches. How has your ministry impacted singles, people who desire to find yes. a uh, marriage partner and to walk forward together in life? How has your ministry been able to affect singles especially in church it's been tremendously impactful because you have so many singles who desire marriage yeah and so what we talk about with singles is that there are four seasons of a successful relationship tell us about that. first you have the dating season i know that's a term that we struggle with in the church but we're talking about dating according yeah. to the word not yeah. the world then you have committed courtship then you have engagement and then you have marriage. So there right, is hold a. On. Before you run up, run up, we've got to slow. Let's back that thing up. Let's yes, go. sir. So, so, so break down each one okay. in, in brief. Go ahead. So this, the dating season yep. is the selection process right. where you really are making a decision on who's the right person for you. You know, typically yeah. we base our selection process on two things yeah. physical attraction and emotional desirability. Right. So if you look good and you can make me feel good, then we think it's all good. But that's not the foundation of a sure. good relationship. Sure. So it's the selection process. Committed courtship is the second season. That is the getting to know you phase. You know, the Bible says, can two walk together unless they be in agreement? So you want to make sure that you have commonalities, shared interests, shared beliefs, so you're moving in the right direction. The engagement season, season number three, that is the season of preparation. That is when that woman is preparing to become a wife, that man is preparing to become a husband, because you should marry. I mean, the person should be a wife before they say, I do. Yeah. A man should be a husband before he says I do, so he's prepared to transition into that role. The fourth season is marriage, which should be the final frontier. I like to explain that there's a major difference between your relationship and your marriage. We've made them synonymous, and they are not. Break that down. A relationship within the confines of a marriage represents sexual fulfillment, emotional uh, desirability, meeting each other's emotional needs, expressing love and care, the blending of personalities. So it's very heartfelt and heart connected. That's relationship. That's relationship. Right. The marriage represents the structure, the organization, the management of the home, the, the finances, the child re rearing, uh, the planning for the future. So marriage is an institution. The relationship fits within the institution right. of marriage. Right. So there are different skills that are required to make both of them work. We found that there are some people who have great relationships, they connect well, but their marriage is in disorder. There's no function and structure in the home, and vice versa. On paper, the marriage is great. Money in the bank, kids are taken care of, wonderful home, but there's no connection, there's no relationship. Mm. So we think it's important to have a combination of both where you succeed in both areas. Uh, 
a lot of marriages, uh, as, as a pastor, I deal with uh, married couples and as I travel and interact with people and hear about their stories, it comes across like there's many people who have, they're married, but they have company with no connection. Yes. And in terms of that connection, when you delve into some of these areas, you often find, and it's something you mentioned earlier, that they never ever, pre the individuals prepared themselves for marriage. Yes. As a single, what should a single person, man or woman, be yes. doing to prepare themselves for marriage? Well, in my estimation, there are three relationships that every person should master. First is the relationship that you have with your God. That's your vertical relationship. Yeah. Second, the relationship you have with yourself, that's your internal relationship. And third, the relationship with a partner, that's your horizontal relationship. And what we have found is that most people haven't really taken the time to master the internal or the vertical one. So when they get into a horizontal relationship, they really have no foundation to stand on. See, you can't love someone unless you truly love yourself. You can't love yourself unless you truly know yourself, and you certainly can't know yourself unless you know the God that exists within you. So, so the relationship... Mm -hmm. so, so that relationship that you have with the father is a template for what the relationship should look like with your partner. So there's a lot of individual work that you have to do to prepare yourself uh, for marriage. I'm going to hone in on one particular area, the relationship with yourself. Yes. Learning to love yourself. Singles hear this stuff all the time. Prepare yourself. You're in waiting. Destiny's going to unveil who your husband or wife is. Yes. Get yourself ready. But what does, re what does loving yourself literally look like? What does, what does a single person do specifically to love themselves? Well, first of all, it's overcoming your issues, your idiosyncrasies, your contradictions, your faults, your, your flaws, all of the baggage that you've carried from past relationships. I say that we often enter into relational menage a trois because we haven't healed from our past relationships and we dump all of that pain into a new relationship, hurting the present partner that we're with. So it's really becoming whole and complete within yourself. It's having a she tox, getting that woman out of your system, a he tox, getting that man out of your system so that you become whole and complete a within she God. A she tox and a he tox. I got a, a, a right, she tox right. and a, a he tox, yes. And a detox, getting that devil out of your system. There you go. Right, that. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. And so those are the things that are necessary to become whole and complete. Right. And when you're secure within yourself, when you know what you truly like, what you truly want, many people date through trial and error. Right. They're trying to figure things out in the process, and so many people get hurt as a result of that. So taking the time to master the season of singleness prepares you for a relationship with someone else. That's wonderful. And all of this, if you just show us your book, is in uh, much of the stuff to do with married couples is in the audacity of marriage. But in there is also principles that single people can learn from. And I, I, I'm guessing that if you're waiting to be married, you shouldn't just wait till you're married before you read the oh, book. Oh, absolutely not. So we do a lot in terms of marriage preparation. Yeah. You know, we take our time really counseling and coaching couples who want to transition into marriage and letting them know that it's serious business. And a lot of times, you know, they say love is blind, but yeah. marriage will open up both of your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to prepare them as much as we can. And we want them to know that, yes, there are the benefits of marriage, but there's also a purpose for your marriage. Yes. See, marriage is a God idea. Yes. He instituted the institution of marriage. Right. It's not a social construct. Right. It's not a political identity or agenda. God put this thing in place. And he created each of us, male and female, with our own uniqueness and our own individuality and our self-expression. What happens is when we get into marriage, our number one assignment becomes fixing our partner and making them just like us. And that's the problem. Compatibility isn't being just like your partner. Compatibility is identifying the differences, celebrating them, and figuring out how you can make them work within the relationship so that you can have what it is that God has called you to have. I mean, Adam and Eve, they were the original I couple. They were completely different, but God intentionally designed them differently in order for them to come together as one to work. And so one of the things that we're really passionate about, once you've discovered your purpose, we have something called the Couples Business School. There's so many couples who are in ministry together, who are in business together, that are really struggling to try to figure it out. Because if your relationship is not in order, it impacts your ministry. 
It impacts your business. So we focus on getting the relationship right. We focus on helping them to have a, an appropriate ministry or business so that they can soar and make great impact for the kingdom of God. That's phenomenal stuff. Hassani, I want to thank you. I mean, ministries like yours are rare. And the impact that you're making in the body of Christ and, and in the world generally is phenomenal. And I'd like you just to take a moment as we close out this interview just to perhaps pray. I know you're a man of God. I know you're, you've got strong Christian faith. Your wife and yourself have great integrity. And I want you just to look into that camera and just pray for that couple who are sitting there worried, that person who's worried about their marriage and who really needs a ministry like yours to really help them. Begin to pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for every union, for every couple, for every marriage. We thank you because this is a God idea that you put in the earth realm for your purpose and for your kingdom. For every couple who's struggling and going through conflict or experiencing crisis, Father, I just pray that you will intervene right now. I pray that they will soften their hearts and begin to seek you, understanding that you are the glue that binds us all together. Father, I pray that you will soften their hearts and help them to begin to work through their issues so that they can have the union that you've called upon them to have, even for every single watching right now. Father, prepare them for the union that they are trying to transition into. Give them a spirit of peace and tranquility. Give them a spirit of wisdom and knowledge to know what it does, what it takes to maintain a healthy relationship so that you may be glorified in this earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Wasn't that wonderful? Thank you so Thank much, Asani. Awesome. Couplesacademy.org. Yes, sir. People need to check it out. Well, that was an amazing, amazing piece of information. I think we just had a whole workshop and seminar <laughs> right in this show here. But uh, at this time, we're going to hear some more from Nathan, Jess, and Ben. So put your hands together for them as they come. <laughs>